The Society of Automotive Engineers does stuff to help the industry work better, like make specs for charging couplers, J1772, J3400. Beyond that, they do amazing work in hosting competitions for college students to participate in. Baja SAE dates back to 1976. Formula SAE officially started in 1981. These and other student competitions continue today. And Formula SAE has expanded to offer three different flavors. You have the original flavor using an engine up to 710 cc's. You have a hybrid racing series. And of course, I wouldn't be covering this unless it's electric. Formula SAE Electric held its annual event at the Michigan International Speedway. 69 teams, four countries, zero tailpipe emissions. This student event has massive amounts of requirements and competition rules that need to be factored into the car design, literally hours of content. So I'm only gonna scratch the surface, but I'll put lots of links in the notes. Here are just a few of the design considerations that each team needs to navigate. When you listen to all the judges, they keep saying the same thing, keep it simple. Newer teams need to focus on a minimum viable product. Don't try to win the event in your first year. Most teams start with a tubular space frame design. Then after a few events, they evolve to a carbon fiber monocoque design. This is an example of a tubular design. Here are some monocoques, reduced weight being the primary advantage and, and they look amazing too. Teams that have a few years of experience in Formula SAE Electric and the other series get very advanced with their aero and very, very cool looking. Keep it simple though. The downforce from the aero helps in the autocross, but it probably just slows down the car in the acceleration test. Judges recommend focusing your resources on other parts of the design before creating elaborate aero packages, but damn, they look cool. Let's talk power. Regulations limit how much electrical energy can be sent to the electric motors, or motors, plural. That gets metered to ensure fair competition. I'm gonna oversimplify the choices that the teams have. A good place to start is a single motor, rear wheel drive through a chain sprocket to reduce the drive ratio, then transfer that power through a compact limited slip differential. A very common motor of choice is from MREX. This is an axial flux motor design, sometimes called a pancake motor. That's different from the longitudinal flux motor we see in EVs on the road. Axial flux motors are powerful for their package size. McLaren uses one in their plug-in hybrid. Rules do allow all-wheel drive, and if you're ready for that, AMK Motion makes a package of four hub motors, one for each wheel. A couple of teams use this setup. Advantages? If you stick around, I'm gonna show some highlights from the acceleration event, and this is where the quad motor shines. They're not making more power, cause that's limited, but they do put down the power to the ground very effectively. The downside? Well, weight, complexity, unsprung mass at each wheel. SAE uses the term accumulator in their requirements. Cars use batteries, but supercapacitors are not outlawed. I can't tell you if any of the teams used a capacitor, but if I get enough likes on this video, I'll dig into it. In general, the lithium ion batteries used are only about five to six kilowatt hours. It's not a big car. The size of the battery is mostly determined by the endurance event. The bright young engineers need to calculate just how much battery they need given their particular design. This is how you learn the fun way. The accumulator needs to encompass all the features of a modern EV, battery management, cooling, and an enclosure to keep them safe. Brakes, yeah, they're important in a race car and beautiful too. The teams who have been at it for a while can focus on small details like making them lighter. Do they have regen? Maybe, most of the braking is accomplished at the front. If you keep it simple, your motor is at the rear, so it's advised not to worry about integrating regen for newer teams. Teams with quad motors or teams that have been doing this for a few years can start to incorporate that feature. I should mention that this event attracts companies who are looking for the best of the best. Ford, Stellantis, GM, 
Honda, Rivian, and lots of suppliers for the auto industry. Blue Origin, SpaceX, and of course, everybody wants to put their fingerprints on the Cybertruck. But in all seriousness, Tesla sponsored a lot of cars, so good on them. I know, I know, I'll promise you'll get to see more videos soon enough, but first come the presentations. Teams earn points for their design, sales, and cost presentations. Here are the top performers for each. Before they can hit the track, teams must pass technical inspections to make sure they meet the rules and quite honestly are deemed safe enough to compete. And this is a bittersweet series of events. Just showing up with a functional car is a huge undertaking. Getting that car to pass the inspections is a massive victory. You'll see stickers on the cars confirming that they made it through mechanical inspection, electrical inspection, tilt test, rain test, and brake test. My personal favorite mechanical requirement is the driver egress. The driver needs to be able to exit the car in under five seconds, and it's a mixture of excitement and relief when the team passes. A little more fun is the brake test, where after a short acceleration, the car must demonstrate sufficient braking power to lock up all four wheels. <laughs> Teams used pit row at MIS as a drag strip for the acceleration test. Let's take a look at a few. And how about we start with my alma mater, the Rochester Institute of Technology. Rear-wheel drive cars can struggle at the starting line. And since they're typically using sprockets and a chain, they can have a high-pitched grinding noise. University of Pittsburgh has a very pretty car, and it's fast, it's not just pretty. Georgia Tech has an experienced program and now uses a quad motor setup. Listen to the sound different, it kind of whistles down the track. I got this slow motion video and you can kind of really see how the four wheels are putting that power to the track. And some teams do just fine without any error work. The skid pad is a figure eight. Each run includes two circles turning right, followed by two circles turning left. The two times are then posted individually and averaged. University of Texas was in the practice area when this happened. I assume they needed to adjust their limited slip differentials. Those units have some internal adjustments that they can make, so they got to work, and then when they hit the skid pad for a very good finish. University of Illinois appears to be a quad motor from other pictures. It has that whistle-like sound. In this, in this run, listen to the reaction of the crowd. It's, it's, it tells it all.
The autocross event is an individual lap, and then later during the endurance event, it requires multiple laps of the course with other cars on the track. This is where it helps to have more aero downforce, but that didn't stop Virginia Tech from pushing it, pushing it real good. On this run, Montreal Poly pushed it too hard, but later came back to record one of the fastest laps of the day. In autocross, the fast laps are uneventful, boring, and the out-of-control laps are interesting. This was Cornell's worst lap. They nailed three cones, but later on, they got much faster. In summary, this video only scratches the surface of what is Formula SAE Electric. I'd like to get your thoughts in the comments, especially if you've been on a team or worked as a volunteer. And yes, feel free to correct me for anything I may have said wrong. Older generations, my generation, like to moan about kids today, but I saw nothing but hardworking, smart, young men and women taking on new challenges and mostly succeeding but always learning from their attempts. I'd like to congratulate all the teams that showed up, but there is an award for the overall winner. And this year, it was the Rochester Institute of Technology. Never said I was going to be unbiased. Great job. Thanks to SAE. Thanks to all the teams. And thank you for watching.